Hey everyone, welcome to Professor Long's Lectures in Anatomy and Physiology. I'm Professor Bob Long. What I'm going to be doing today is going over our wire man. We're continuing our study of the vascular system, and we actually haven't even started on the model in my videos. What I'm doing is I'm drawing all the arteries and veins out because I believe that if you can draw them and memorize them in your head and have a picture that you could draw out from memory, then you'll be able to find all the arteries and veins by their landmarks when you get to the models and um, when you're working in surgery and things. So I'm gonna push that aside for now, and we're gonna draw out the veins that go to the abdomen and the veins to the leg in this video. So I'm gonna do two sets of drawings. Um, we've already done the arteries to the head, to the arm, to the abdomen, the leg, and we've done the veins to the head and the arm. So uh, if you haven't seen those videos, please go back through my channel and find those videos and watch them. You have to remember that we, as we started early on, arteries are red, veins are blue except for the pulmonaries and if you don't know what I'm talking about or why go back and watch the introductory video um, that covers the introduction of the arteries and veins and then the arteries to the head in that video I discuss all of this and the reasoning why now in our limbs we have dual venous drainage and what that means is we're gonna have an extra set of veins draining the arms and the legs when we have an anterior posterior relationship I'm gonna use blue for the veins and the anterior ones will stay blue the ones that are posterior will be in purple, okay? So, now before I go into the veins of the abdomen and the abdominal organs, I wanna show you something that really maybe will help alleviate some confusion that students have. When I pump blood out of the heart, when the human body pumps blood out of the heart through the aorta, we will sometimes have blood go from the aorta through an artery Remember, this is the aorta coming out of the heart, delivering oxygenated blood to our tissues so our tissues can make energy to perform their functions. We'll have an organ, for example, over here, let's say this is the kidney. That organ will take the oxygenated blood, use the oxygen and glucose to make energy to perform its function. The kidneys filter our blood or clean a lot of the toxins out of it and run that off into urine so we can get it out of the body so the toxins don't build up and poison us. In the process of using up the oxygen, they, make, they dump carbon dioxide into the blood, the blood turns blue. Again, for reasons if you don't understand, watch the introductory video and the arteries to the head. But the vein will come out of the kidney and deliver deoxygenated blood to the inferior vena cava. Of course, there's other organs like the brain that dump it into the superior vena cava eventually. So we would have a renal artery coming from the aorta to the organ. We're gonna have a renal vein going from the organ back to the inferior vena cava. Now, some of our organs are not filter organs. So not only do they use the oxygen and dump carbon dioxide back into the blood, but along with that metabolism, there's a lot of metabolic waste and a lot of that metabolic waste is toxic and it could poison your cells. And so we have to filter those toxins out. And so some of the organs are actually gonna bypass the inferior vena cava. For example, if I have my abdominal organs, right? So let's say I have the small and large intestine down here. They're gonna take blood from our aorta and we would have the mesenteric vein, for our artery I should say. So let's say this is the inferior mesenteric artery. Okay, I'm just going to put IMA for inferior mesenteric artery. Of course, we've covered this in a previous video. If I were to run the blood from my small intestine all the way or the large intestine back into the inferior vena cava directly, that, that vein is going to have a lot of toxins in it from all the nutrients that I've absorbed from digestion but we also absorb a lot of metabolic waste and in that metabolism and absorption, we get some toxins. And if I sent them directly back to the heart, they would poison the heart. One of the things I like to, to teach my students when I'm in class, in lecture and in lab, is the biggest wimps of the human body are neurons. The second biggest wimps in the human body are heart muscle cells. What I mean by that is some cells can tolerate wide swings and changes of salts and glucose and oxygen and certain um, ions and certain metabolites and things, wide swings in, in that. Some cells 
have a very narrow range of homeostatic conditions. If you change the pH or the salts or the oxygen concentration, they fall off like flies. They're not very strong and hardy. Well, the biggest wimps of the human body, the least strong or the least hearty, hardy cells are brain cells, neurons, and cardiocytes. I can't send these toxins back to the heart through the inferior vena cava. So the mesenteric veins actually run into another filter organ called the liver. And they're going to meet up a bunch of these veins are all going to meet up and then they're going to come in as the hepatic vein. Then they're going to run through the liver, get cleaned, and then run that clean blood into the inferior vena cava. This is actually called the hepatic portal vein and the hepatic portal vein man sorry that got a little tight in there but this vessel here is the hepatic portal vein it's the doorway puerta or portal into the liver and then this would be the hepatic vein here, going from the liver to the inferior vena cava. So some of the organs have an artery that goes to them and a vein that goes right back to the inferior vena cava. If those organs filter blood or they're very small organs that don't develop a whole lot of trash and toxins or carbon dioxide. But when we go to some of these larger organs, particularly large parts of the digestive tract, we have to bypass the inferior vena cava and go into the liver. The liver cleans and filters all the toxins out of the blood. And then the blood goes back into the inferior vena cava, back to the heart, back to the lungs, and so on. And then it can circulate back around. It is this portal system that confuses a lot of students when we do this, okay? Now, I hope I didn't confuse you too much, um, but I'm a little pressed for time. And I'm not going to reshoot this whole video again. So I'm going to erase all of this. Hopefully this makes sense. And then we're going to actually see the veins of the abdomen in this drawing. Okay. So because I'm going to be coming from the heart down the abdomen, I'm going to draw the heart kind of high up. And then I'll do my little key of my list of structures over here. We know this vessel that comes up above the heart is the superior vena cava. I covered in the previous video, if you're going in the order that they appear on my YouTube page or in my class, the superior vena cava and all the branches that go from the brain back to the heart or from the arm back to the heart. We're going to focus on the inferior vena cava, which is going to come all the way down here, a very large thick vessel, the largest vein in the human body, and we're going to label it number one all the way down. So number one on our picture is going to be the inferior vena cava or some people like to say vena cava so they sound real smart okay now a couple of major organs that are sitting here um i'm going to put that number one back on here one of the organs that sits here is the liver which wraps around the inferior vena cava it would be running on the back side of the liver okay and um i'm going to draw it going in front another major organ that we're going to see over here is the spleen and then finally we would have two kidneys or renal organs okay those are some of our major landmarks now if I come down the inferior vena cava really only two sets of veins go from the organ into the inferior vena cava directly we have the renal veins, which come in like this, okay? And, you know, when you look at the model, the left kidney is just a little bit higher than the right kidney, and so they join at a slightly different um, point. But these two vessels here would be our right and left renal veins. Again, I'm going to abbreviate V for vein. The only other branches that we see directly coming in here is there's a one little skinny one that comes off here. And because of the location of the ovary next to the kidney, the second one doesn't go to the inferior vena cava. It actually goes to the left renal vein. And so this would be 
the left and right gonadal veins. Or if you were a female, this would be the left ovarian vein and the right ovarian vein. The right ovarian vein goes right into the inferior vena cava. The left goes to the renal vein and then into the inferior vena cava. Now the ovaries don't produce a lot of energy, a lot of trash, and so they can go directly in. If this were a male, the testes would develop here and then descend into the scrotum, but the veins are still connected high up in the abdomen. We talked a little bit about that when we did the arteries. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky, okay? We have a vein that comes out of the spleen that's going to come over this way, and this is called the splenic vein. There's only one E in the word splenic, even though there's two E's in the word spleen, okay? That looks like the letter O, but it's really an organ called the spleen. Now the inferior mesenteric vein is going to come up this side. It's going to bypass behind all of this, and it's going to join the splenic vein at this point. So this vein all the way down is the inferior mesenteric vein. Notice I don't put right or left because there's only one. And I explained before the mesentery is that kind of clear connective tissue that holds guts together when you try to separate out the intestines on a frog or something that you dissect. And so since this vein runs through the mesenterics, or through the mesentery, they're called the mesenteric veins. I'm just gonna put a K on these two organs to delineate kidney for you, okay? Now here's one of the tricks. Where the inferior mesenteric and the splenic vein meet, for a little ways coming across here in front of, I told you I would do purple behind, but this time it's in front. It stays the inferior mesenteric vein over here. All of this is inferior mesenteric vein. There's another vein that comes up this side that joins this, and that's gonna be the superior mesenteric vein. And unlike the arteries, with the arteries, with the superior mesenteric artery came off superior to the inferior, here the veins meet up at the same location. One's not really superior or inferior, but they're named for the artery that they run next to. And when you do look at the wire man, you will see that kind of going off to the right is the superior mesenteric artery and vein running next to each other and the inferior mesenteric artery and vein. That's why they're named the way that they are. Of course, we'll cover that again when we do the wire man in the videos. Now, once these two meet, the name changes again. It will come up into the liver and then it splits going up into the liver and that is the hepatic portal vein. And this is important. The hepatic portal vein runs into the liver. The blood goes through the liver and gets cleaned, and then there's gonna be a little vein that goes from here and on this side into the inferior vena cava, just before it goes up under through the diaphragm and into the heart. And they really are inside of here, inside or on the back side. But nonetheless, that one number eight is gonna be the right and left hepatic veins. Notice there's no portal. The portal is the doorway in, and then we have a right and left hepatic vein on the back side of the liver, and because the liver is literally wrapped around the um, aorta, they, you can barely see them going in, okay? But they're there. All right, so those are the vessels of the abdomen. Oh, actually, I left off the little gastric loop, and when you look at the model, you'll see that the two mesenterics are joined by a little skinny loop, I'm gonna make it a dashed line here, but this little skinny loop right here would be your gastric vein that joins the two mesenterics, okay? Um, it's a little tiny loop and you'll see it on the models. Now this picture confuses a lot of students. I get it, but you guys just gotta work it until you can't stand it. If you follow the inferior vena cava down, we have the two renals and the two gonadals. Then we have a splenic and inferior mesenteric, 
They come to cross as the inferior mesenteric, and the one coming up to join it is the superior mesenteric, where they meet as your hepatic portal. And then you have the gastric joining those two mesenterics, okay? The hepatic veins are on the back side of the liver and go directly from the liver into the inferior vena cava, and therefore they appear very short because of the way that the liver is wrapped around. All right, those are the vessels that go to the abdomen. I'm gonna do one more video, and in the next video, we're gonna cover the veins to the leg that drain the leg back into the inferior vena cava, and then we will be done, all right? Thanks for watching. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I hope you're enjoying learning this stuff. It can be tough, but anything worth doing is not gonna come easy. The payoff in the long run will be huge. So make sure you learn this material because you're gonna fall back and rely upon it when you get to the next level of your education, all right? Thanks for watching. See you next time.